All right, so level three of chapter seven. This begins on page 473 of your text. Um, in this level, we're looking at XML data and how to work with that in Excel. It's not super complicated, so hopefully this will go pretty fast. The um, files you need to download for this lesson are right here. And again, you're gonna just want to save these to your computer. So save as, I like to put them on my desktop. So save, and then I'm gonna do this one, and save. And this one is an Excel file, but you're also just gonna to wanna to save that one as well, okay? Um, these two are XML files, and this uh, again is an Excel file, so let's go to our desktop here. If you just try and open this XML file, you're gonna get an error message unless you have an XML handler installed on your computer, which most of you probably do not. But you can right click on these and open with Notepad, all right? Um, so this is what an XML file looks like. And I just wanna talk a little bit about how this is set up so that um, there's an understanding of how it works. This first piece right here, this is called your root element. And this is basically what the file is about. So you'll see sports apparel up here in between two carrots, and then down at the bottom, the element ends. In other words, it's ending the document at this point. So it's beginning the document, then it's ending the document, and um, with the same name. So sports apparel and sports apparel. So everything contained in between those two tags are is considered a part of the document information and so then you have two records within here so each record is indented and you have retailer right here and then it ends right here and then you have a second retailer that begins right here and then it ends right here all right so two records and then indented from the retailer um, is the information about that retailer and so these are the different fields within this record so the company and then the company name, and then you end the company, all right? So so every element of an XML document has a tag to, to open it, and then an, an identical tag to end it, all right? So notice the way it begins, um, the tag is enclosed in carrots, and then to end it, it's enclosed in carrots with a slash at the beginning, all right? For every single one of these. Um, you begin it inside the carrots and then the same tag with a slash to close it out. All right, so that's how an XML document is set up. Um, and I'm going to show you how to create an XML document um, in Notepad really quick because you do have to create one for the step to success. So on your computer, you should have a Notepad program. If it's not on your start menu here, you can. Um, Type it in here and it'll come up in under programs. So grab that. All right, so it, once you're in Notepad, you can create an XML document. And um, for the step to success, the different tags are given to you. So you obviously start with your root element, which is what your document is about. Um, each element has to be enclosed in the carrots. So I'm just going to do a simple example one. We're going to call these uh, employees. So employees, I'm starting this, and then we're going to call this uh, day shift. All right, so now I've created a record for a day shift employee, okay? And this employee's name is John, uh, excuse me, I need to tag his name. So his name is John, and then we end that, and then um, let's see, his position is as a cashier. There we go. Okay, so then we end that. All right, uh, then we need to close out our record. So, day shift, 
and when you close it out, you need to put the slash after the first caret. All right, and then once you are done entering all your records, you close out your root element to end the document. So slash employees. Right. All right. So this is just the basic setup of a XML document. You can enter as many as you want. Um, you generally need to enter at least two records um, so that when you import it into Excel, Excel recognizes it as an Excel map or an XML map. So um, in the step to success, you're going to create two records. I only created one here, but you'll be creating two different records. Um, it's a little bit of a longer but not than this, but you just do it in Notepad and then you hit File and hit Save As and you want to uh, hit this drop down arrow here and go to All Files and then you name it whatever you're supposed to name it. So I'm going to call this employees.xml. Okay, and you want to put that .xml extension on there so that it's, it saves as an XML document. Go ahead and hit Save and you'll notice it showed up here on my uh, desktop. And if I click on it, it's going to give me an error message because it's saved as an XML document. So if you want to view it, you're going to need to right click and open with Notepad. All right, so that's just a basic introduction to what an XML document is and what it looks like. And so now we are going to utilize that a little bit. Okay, so go ahead and open Excel at this point. And we're just going to play with XML a little bit within Excel. In a blank workbook. Um, XML is not very complicated in Excel. It's actually pretty easy to work with. Go to your data tab and you want to get from other sources and from XML data import is the button you're going to want to click on. I have my stuff on my desktop. Um, right now go ahead and get that apparel XML document. All right, you're going to get this message. The specified XML source does not refer to a schema. Excel will create a schema based on the source data. Go ahead and hit OK and put it in your worksheet here. All right, so what it meant by it doesn't contain a schema is there was no definition of columns, etc., in the XML map. So Excel looked at the way the data was set up and where the indents were, etc to determine where records began and ended, and it created a table for us because this was not part of our Excel data, or XML data, excuse me. So each of our records in that is gonna be a, a, a row here. We, we refer to this as a record when we're talking about database information. So I wanna just open this and show you real quick how it interpreted this. All right, so we had our sports apparel, was what was going on here and then each retailer we had a retailer here and a retailer here the first retailer was Bennett's and then we had all this information out about them the second retailer was Speedy Sports and we had all this information about them so when I look in Excel what it did was it um, brought in Bennett's and all the information about that retailer in one row and Speedy Sports in another row and those tags we had this tag company and this tag address, etc. Those became our column headings, all right? So we have the company and the address and the city, etc., etc. All right, so that's how Excel works with XML data. And this is linked to that data. It imported it as a table, and this table is going to function exactly the same as any other Excel table. You can do everything with it. You would a normal Excel table. But this data is linked to... Um, get that source data. So if you were to add records in that Excel XML table and then refresh that data, if we were to refresh this, if we added a record, it would be imported and added here in Excel. So kind of the same idea as with a database. Um, it's a dynamic link that is connected. All right. Um, if I want to work with my XML data in this table, I need my developer tab up here. This tab is not uh, turned on by default in Excel, so to turn this developer tab on, you need to go to your file tab and down to options, 
and you'll get this options dialog box, go to customize ribbon, and then on this side over here you'll see a developer um, label with a checkbox beside it. Make sure that checkbox is clicked and then hit OK. And this developer tab will show up here in your ribbon. On this developer tab you have this XML group, so you can hit this source button here and it's going to show you um, how Excel mapped that source data. So I had that sports apparel was my root element, remember, and then within that I had retailers listed. And then it's showing me all the different fields within that retailers um, file. All right, so um, each retailer that I have is considered part of this, and these are the different fields it contains. Let's see. Um, let's go talk about that other XML piece. On this source pane, you have this XML Maps button. Go ahead and hit that. And you can actually import one of these. This is called an XML map or an XML data tree. Uh, it's got a couple different names it can be called. So you can import one of these without actually importing the data. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Go ahead and hit this Add button in the XML Maps dialog box and navigate to that other um, XML file, that reps start file. And open that. It's going to tell you the same thing. It doesn't refer to a schema or basically a map. Um, Excel is going to create the map based on the way your data is formatted. So hit OK. So you've now got this rep info map here Hit the OK button. And now you can toggle with this arrow to select either map. But you'll notice that the um, rep info, even though the map is in here, I don't have any information. So I can map, even though the map is imported, at this point I can do what is called mapping the elements in Excel. So any of these elements that I want to include, I can drag over here and um, let's see, we'll talk about first name and maybe I want to know their last name and where they live. Oopsies. Make sure they're in line. There we go. And the city and the state and the zip code too in case I want to send them a letter, right? All right. So I have just done what's called mapping these elements in Excel and it's basically created an empty XML table. So now if I want to import the data I can go and hit this refresh link and ta-da! It imports all the data that was in that file. So let's go back and look. Um, if I open this file to view it with notepad I can see that there are two records here um, rep 1 and rep 2, and the first name of this rep is Charlene, and then Fields, she lives in Vancouver, Washington, and this is Benjamin Fawcett, uh, he lives in Vancouver as well. When I go to Excel, I can see that Charlene Fields and her information has been imported, and Benjamin Fawcett. Alright, so, um, again, these tables are linked to the original source data, and therefore when you uh, update anything there, it's going to update here once you refresh it. Notice that the information that was imported did not include the phone number because I did not map that field to my Excel table. All right, so the phone number I left over here, and so that phone number was not imported. Now if I want to export this data from Excel, I can go to my Developer tab and hit this Export button. And I can save this as, we'll call it reps1. And export that. Go back to our desktop. And let's view that real quick. All right, so no, now notice that when I exported that data, the phone number is not included because it was not mapped. So any elements um, that are not mapped to Excel when you export it, the information from Excel, those are not going to be included. If you want them included, you need to include them as part of your table. All right, so those are the basics of XML data. In fact, that's pretty much all you need to know about it. Um, 
when working in Excel. So the point of all that was, is that Barbara has, if you open that Excel start file, and I will let it, okay. Barbara has all this information that she got from the distributor, remember? Um, this is the data from that Excel database that she put into Excel. And there's almost 2,000 different retailers in this. And she wants to be able to save this as an XML document so that she can share it with their business partners, etc., anyone else who might need to look at it who um, can view data in XML. XML data is super useful um, when sharing for, for file sharing, basically, because it's a non-proprietary format for data, which means that it's no one owns the rights to this data format. So a lot, a lot of different programs can interpret it because it's not proprietary, all right? So it's not specific to a certain program, in other words. So she wants to save this as XML data. So go ahead and um, add a new sheet here. And what we want to do is import an XML map that's going to work with our retailers here. So go to your um, developer tab and XML here. You want to hit this source task pane. Now notice I don't have any maps in this workbook yet. Everything's blank. So just hit the maps button down here and we're going to add a map to this workbook. And that reps start file, oops, sorry, not the reps, the apparel start file um, that you downloaded is identical to, okay, okay, um, includes all the fields that we need. All right, so this map is what is needed for all these retailers. It, okay, it contains all these fields, they're in the correct order, etc. Um, total sales, number of orders, last order date. You can see all of those listed in this XML map here. So I've got this XML map. I am going to put it, drag it over here and put it in my worksheet. I just put the whole thing in here so I've got this blank XML table. So now I need to add my data to it. And so you don't want to select your headings. You just want your records. So starting at Sunnyvale here, I'm going to select all of my data and hit copy. Go over here and start in my first row of data and hit paste. And it's going to paste all of that data into this XML table. Now, since it is considered XML data in this table, I can go to my developer tab and I can export this data. And we'll save this as retailers and hit export. Now when I go to my desktop I have this retailers here open with notepad and all of these retailers all the almost 2,000 of them have now been converted to XML data um, that's usable by multiple programs. Okay so that is the purpose of that. Um, it take, you need at least two records. So I, I used this right here. This was what we imported our map from. You need at least two different records for Excel to be able to import that map, all right? So when you go to your steps to success, you're gonna create two records that look like this and save this. Then you're gonna import your map and be able to save your data as an XML document because creating two records is a heck of a lot easier then creating um, these 2,000. Can you imagine if you had to type out 2,000 records in XML format? That would be terrible. So that's the purpose of this. Um, it creates a shortcut for you to save Excel data as XML. All right, at this point, you should be able to complete the steps to success for level three, which is on page 484.